Hey everybody, welcome back. It's another off topic, another month. This one is without a guest. So it's just Greg and I, we're going to just uh, sit around and talk for the next hour. So I hope you guys are ready for this. I'm excited. I've been super busy recently, so I haven't had a lot of time to talk with Greg. We used to talk a lot more than we do and I feel bad. So I figured tonight's topic, rather than have specific questions or specific things to discuss, figured we'd catch up. And there's been a bunch of stuff going on with you know sports and collecting and there's enough stuff to talk about i don't know i think one of the things we might want to mention is maybe you want do you want to talk about the fifth inning last night oh man uh <laughs> sure let's talk about the fifth inning now i don't know when this is going to post but obviously we're talking about game five of the world series the fifth inning where the Yankees maybe on paper had two errors, but they really had three. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I have a lot, a lot of thoughts on the series. First of all, I'll say this, you know, as a Yankee fan, as you are as well. Uh, one thing I enjoyed was the texting throughout the games with my brother and my dad. Like I had a lot Me of too. fun uh, spending those uh, that emotional roller coaster with them uh, texting was was great. Um, the Yankees did not execute fundamentals that you would think a championship team would be able to execute. Mm -hmm. And I think that the the Dodgers were by far the best team in the series. Now, granted, game one. Uh, was l looking like it was going to be a Yankee victory. And uh, after some interesting decisions from management, uh, it ended up not turning out that way. And it's hard to recover from an emotional let off like that. Um, and they really kind of didn't. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I agree with you. And one of the things that I was talking to uh, my, my dad and my wife about, um, which is cool. My uh, wife used to play uh, softball in high school and in college. So she like, she's into baseball, like she's into watching baseball games, which is cool because most people don't like watching baseball games. Um, yeah. They think it's boring. My kids do. Um, actually, we took the kids to a Rockies game last year and I have a photograph of me, the three kids and my wife. And I took a picture across all of us. All three kids were sleeping. Oh my. Yeah, so we don't take them anymore. It's a waste of money. Um, but one of the things we're talking about was when you, you mentioned fundamentals. Remember the very first time your dad gave you your first baseball mitt and you got it, you oiled it, you put the ball in it, you stuck it under your mattress, right? Mm -hmm. Then you went out a day or two later when it's when it was softened up a little bit, and you go to play catch. And what's the very first thing your dad tells you before he throws a baseball at you? Watch the ball go in the glove, right? Now, Aaron Judge, he's on, what, a half a billion dollar contract? That basic point, I don't think, goes away, though, right? Like, that's still the very first thing. When Aaron Judge was two, right, and he was, like, five feet tall, and his dad taught him how to play catch, he probably said, Aaron, watch the ball go into the glove, right? And last night, he didn't do that, and that was disappointing, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. is Judge is going to catch a lot of heat for how the series went. Um, he obviously had a better offensive game in Game 5. Yes. Uh, obviously had that drop. But, you know, just before that, he made a really nice catch Yes. Uh, up against the fence. Uh, he's a big man to be playing center field. And yeah. the fact that he's able to do it well. So... You know, I know he's going to catch heat, but there is no Yankee World Series team without Judge doing what Judge has done. 100%. And so, yeah, I mean, obviously that was a bummer. Uh, the throw from Volpe was a bummer. Uh, but, you know, Volpe had a, a great game the night before, you right. know, and and so... I mean, and, and you could say, I mean, personally, the, the mistake at first base, that was a Garrett Cole mistake. That was a, he should have been there to, to get the ball. But then, I mean, if, if Garrett, Garrett Cole <laughs> pitched really well in the world series and didn't get one win. Yeah. So, and you know, game one, 
he pitched really well. And in game five, he pitched really well. And it's, it's like, I mean, if somebody judges me, no pun intended, from my worst moment, instead of looking at the collection of the whole, yeah. then I think they're overlooking a lot because those two guys have been spectacular this year. Hundred percent. I was just, I was just liking to, I just like to whine and sometimes. Oh, I know. I, I, I was know sad that. last night, but I, I will, say, and I agree with you on on Cole. He he pitched a great game. You know, sands the fifth inning. But let's be honest. How many pitchers can have p- pitched the game he pitched, then have that fifth inning? And have his screw up with you know with not covering first, but then come back and pitch the sixth and seventh the way he did. I mean, most pitchers would be done, right? He he proved he proved that he's a great pitcher, even though he lost. Cole is a different kind of character, too. He, I mean, he, sure, we could say he had a bad fifth inning, but they got six outs. So uh I don't he actually I thought pitched fairly decent. Yeah, I mean, there was a there was a fisted uh, hit single uh, in there, and I mean, he 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 did had a grounder to short, a grounder to first, a, a fairly easy play in center. I mean, so I don't even think he pitched bad that inning. The I, I totally could see him going to the. I mean, the way the way I will think that it went down is when he got to the dugout. Boone said. You're coming out, and he said, "No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm yeah, going back in." That. And he just, he just is like, "Boone, you're, you're not going to screw this up. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going back out there because whoever you put in in my place is not going to do what I'm, I'm about to do." Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy is oh, yeah. a freaking warrior, you know, and and the pressure that those guys are facing, and that's not to give him an excuse, but I, I don't know. I mean. The, the thing I said to my brother and my dad after the game was I I had a lot of fun over the course of the playoffs, you know, basically live stream texting them throughout the game. That was that was great. Yeah. Uh, but the pain of of the loss and the way that the whole series kind of went. Yeah, it. It reminded me of why I've had to take a little bit of a step back as a fan of sports over the last few years. Because, like, there was a time where, like, that that ruined at least a week. It, like, yeah. ruined it. Yeah. And I had to just go, okay, I need – so I don't watch every game anymore. You know, I, I check the box score every day. But I don't watch every game like I would have. I don't go to every game where they're in town locally because – I, I, I needed to find a way to not have it control me. Yeah. And, and that was a good reminder last night because that was brutal. It is. But here's my thing. I've, the Yankees, are, the, the Yankees are like, my, I think about them the way I think about my kids, hmm. right? They screwed up yesterday and I was a little disappointed, but I woke up this morning and I still love them. Right. Yeah. No, that's good. And that's, that's yeah. Just like in the regular season, the best baseball player in baseball, Aaron Judge, outperformed the second best player in baseball, Shohei Otani. I mean, I, in, yeah, in, I mean, Judge is going to catch the most heat, but Otani didn't really do anything either. And, no, and people say, well, he got hurt. And well, <laughs> we could go down that rabbit hole of that's why he that's why he shouldn't be stealing as many bases as he's stealing is because uh that's not his role he put his arm down and he hurt his shoulder stealing a base judge 285 pounds ran full speed into a wall and made a catch and stood up and wasn't like oh somebody it was funny because he walked up the field he was holding his wrist like he broke his arm and then they're like he hurt his shoulder i'm like I, I've hurt my shoulder. I never held my, I've broken my wrist too. And I walked off when I broke my wrist, I walked away like he was walking away. So, you know, I think it was just more of a, he couldn't handle the pressure. So they pretended he hurt himself, but that's fine. You know, well, yeah. You know, the Dodgers, the Dodgers, won the though, Dodgers so yeah, they outplayed do? the Yankees. They absolutely they deserved to win the championship. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm hoping that uh, the series showed the, uh, the people in the ivory towers 
the value of uh, Soto and the uh, the value of Cole, and mm-hmm. I hope that they find a way to hang on to him. But we'll see. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, well, what about cards? Like, uh, yes, I, I did a video the other day, and I don't know what you've seen and what you haven't, but I did a video the other day that that got a, a response unlike some of the responses, not in the number of views. It didn't really get a crazy amount of views, but mm-hmm. a lot of people felt like it was, uh, it touched them more than some. And that's the one that I did the other day uh, about kind of like why we collect and like, yeah. And I, I guess that one I did. I'm caught up now. I, I, uh, okay. so just for the viewers, I used to watch Greg's videos as soon as they dropped, but <laughs> My doctor wants me to start doing more cardio, which I'm not a fan of. So now what I do is when Greg drops a video, I don't watch it right away. And then when I go to the gym and do my hour of cardio every morning, I listen to one of his videos. So I get, I sometimes will get a little behind because I don't want to, you know, if I watch them during the day, then I have nothing interesting to listen to for an hour when I'm at the gym. Why don't we, why don't you just tell me what time do you go to the gym and I'll just drop the video, uh, the time that you're driving over. And then everyone else can just adjust. True. 5.30 your time every morning. Oh, that's pretty early. It is, right? Yeah, yeah. I go to the that's gym. I drop my early. stepson off at football. He has zero hour for football. So I drop him off at 6.25 and I go to the gym and start my cardio when I get there. Hmm. Well, you are looking lean, buddy. You're looking Thank good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing great right now because I, I bought like 30 pounds of candy for Halloween. And I'm like, I won't eat any of it. I've probably eaten like. 10 of those little candy bars in the last like two hours. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? So, never been a big fan of self-control. So, <laughs> so on that theme though, yeah. like, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on why do you collect? Cause I kind of talked about, you know, a few different things that it's an escape that it's, you know, uh, a, a way to form friendships. So, and, and I know the easy answer is to say a little of all of that, but like, yeah. where do you kind of, where do you fall? So, um, lots of things. I, I mean, I think originally when I first started collecting, I used to collect because my dad liked to collect when I was a kid and that was fun. It gave us something to talk about. Right. Mm. Um, I stopped collecting when I got to high school. I didn't start again until I turned 40. Uh, it, 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 I started collecting again because I enjoy it. I think one of the, one of the big, I think for me, one of the big things is with everything going on in my life and all the responsibility with, you know, the fam and I got kids getting ready to go to college and, and, you know, driving. And if anybody out there has a teen driver that if you, you'll understand when it comes to getting car insurance for them, um, you know, just lots of things, right. Taking vacations, doing what we do, living our life. And for a while there, it was just like my, my routine was work and then do stuff with the family work to provide then do stuff with the family and my dad my my dad bought me my my uh nolan ryan rookie and said look you need to start doing something that you like to do that kind of takes you away from all the adult stuff that you need to be you know worried about and do something that you used to enjoy as a kid and that's why i got back into it when i got back into it i started me it was like hey I want to do a Nolan Ryan run. So I started that. Then I said, Hey, there's cards I used to, you know, see at card shows when I was a kid that I used to get super excited about. I could buy those now. So I started buying some of the more iconic cards and me, I'm a big history guy. Like I love history in general. Like I think history and probably maybe econ were my two favorite subjects in high school. Mm -hmm. Love history. Same for me. Nice. See, I guess why we're buddies, right? Yeah. Well, that's part of it. Great, great minds, right? So um, I love history and I love the history of baseball. And I think collecting vintage cards, you know, it, it kind of aligns with that, right? It's a way to enjoy baseball history 
um, with sort of a pastime, right? I mean, obviously I could just read books about baseball history, but I think collecting cards is more fun, right? Looking at them and just kind of reminiscing about the player, talking to people about the cards, obviously, right? So for me, the history piece is big. Um, once I started doing YouTube, obviously the friendship thing is massive, right? Like yeah. when I first started collecting, I didn't have collector friends, right? My my dad hadn't gotten back into it. My brother wasn't collecting. None of my friends pre YouTube were collectors. I had a buddy who used to, uh, a, a, a good, good buddy of mine um, is good friends with Reggie Jackson. And he has a bunch of really cool personalized autograph stuff from like, basically think of any player in the hall of fame that was alive, you know, back in like the, like the late eighties through now. Right. So all kinds of greats, he has a bunch of personalized autograph stuff. So he, he and I would talk about it a little bit, but outside of that, like I really didn't have many people to talk about. So then I started, you started doing YouTube and have made a ton of friends. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, that piece wasn't one of the reasons I got back into collecting, but it's one of the huge benefits of mm -hmm. doing that. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just like the joy of looking at my cards, right? Like you have a long day at work and then I could, you know, open up the case and pull something out and just say, Hey, you know, it's nice. I could just, I could just grab a handful of cards, right? Just grab a handful and I even know what I'm grabbing and say, Oh, what am I looking at today? Cool. Well, you know, here's a, 50 Bowman, Jackie Robinson. I was with you when you got that one. You were. Got it from Ash. Yeah. Got a Whitey Ford rookie card. Beautiful. And then my two Burke Ross DiMaggio's. And that was just like cards I grabbed. I just reached in the case and grabbed four cards out, right? So yeah. for me, like, I, I, I do that. I, I do that often. Like the other day, my wife came in the kitchen. She goes, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I haven't pulled my cards out and looked at them in a while. So I'm just going to go through and look at them. And it's just, to me, that's just something I enjoy doing. So I think, I think at the end of the day, the, just the kind of enjoyment of, I don't know if this makes any sense, enjoyment of enjoying the cards, right. Mm -hmm. I think is a huge piece of, of why I collect. And so, so, I mean, really, it's just, there's really nothing for me. There's no real, negative i think everything about it's positive i um for a while i think there was a little bit of a negative impact of me spending so much time doing youtube stuff that the fam was like hey what do you want to do for dinner tonight i'm like you guys figure it out you know i'm gonna go on a live stream or i'm gonna make a video or something and yeah that wasn't great but you know between the new job keeping me pretty busy i've been able to balance out spending more time with the fam so that's that, that's been good and then um yeah you know spending cash but at the end of the day, you know, I, I know what I'm getting myself into, right? Like I never, I never buy cards anymore, expecting them to go up in value. That was something yeah. I kind of did in 2020, but mm -hmm. not, not anymore. I buy them cause I want it cause I want them. Yeah. Now, now you said that when you got back into it, your brother wasn't collecting and your dad wasn't back into collecting, but now I know that they're both active collectors um what when what happened how'd your brother kind of get back roped back in um when my parents gave me my nolan ryan mm -hmm. they my dad had also picked up my brother's a huge ricky henderson fan so yeah. my dad had picked up a uh I, I believe it was a ricky henderson rookie card and gave it to him and he uh he kind of got back into it a little slower like he was like oh cool i got this card and then um, one of the things that that probably starting around the time, maybe a little earlier than when my, I got the Nolan Ryan, when my dad would see a cool piece of memorabilia, not cards, but like random memorabilia, uh, he they thought was cool. He'd buy it and give it to my brother. Or I so my brother, he started. Um, my dad started giving him some stuff and you know like a a, a second base, like a second base from a from Yankee Stadium and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some game used bats from different players and things like that. So he had that stuff. And then when I started getting back into collecting, my brother just thought it was fun. So he started getting yeah. back into it too. 
Um, he collects a lot differently than I do. I think we yeah. both enjoy a lot of the iconic cards. Um, his thing is he likes to buy cards that are good eye appeal twos mm -hmm. because for him, he could get, you know, obviously more cards for the money if he focuses on a lower grade. Mm -hmm. And a lot of his cards he has, or most of his cards are twos, but they all look great for the grade. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, he kind of has expanded out from there. Like he's really into the uh, Venezuelan Retorado set right now. Um, he's but, yeah, become so, very yeah. active in the YouTube world. Like he leaves comments a lot, and there are a lot of times yeah. where I'll watch a video and I'll look at the comments, and he's got comments in them. Like, like he's 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 getting in pretty good now. Yeah, he's, no, he, he's he was he enjoyed watching our videos, and then when he came to the national, I think after the national, he was like he wanted to get more into the YouTube scene. So he, he has, um, yeah. so I think it, this, the, uh, the 2025 national, right. Rather than go back and crash after dinner on Thursday night, he'll come to the YouTube creators event with me, especially yeah, now that he, mean, has a, he has a channel now. So he, he yeah. doesn't even need me to get in there anymore. He's got a great channel. I yeah. enjoy his stuff. I just wish he made more videos. Uh, he's made a few though. I mean, at some point he's kind of the logical choice to be a guest in the near future. I think I agree. I don't know how he, would, would he want to do that? You think? Yeah, he came on. Um, remember when I was trying to do that? Uh, I, I started that, 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 the, the uh, ultimate lineup. I yeah. haven't done one in a few months and I, I need to yeah. do one, but he was, he was, uh, um, he was very active in that helping me, um, create all the graphics and stuff for it. And then yeah. around the time I started it, I think I actually had him on my channel. Like I, I had him come on once and he showed, I don't remember that. He showed some of his cards. He, he remember he showed his Ricky Henderson rookie collection. He showed the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, the oh, seven, yeah. eight, the nine, and then went to go pull out the next one. And it was another two. Yeah. I do remember that yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, and he's a fun guy. I've, I've I had fun getting to know him a little bit at the national and then now we text every every now and then um but yeah i think i think we got to have him on soon I and agree. then your dad your dad has picked up a few cards but he's a little bit more he's a little bit more selective and patient maybe than than you and i yeah oh big big time when it comes to when it comes to cards he's he's super patient he's very selective he um and, and he's not a card guy he's more of a memorabilia guy so he mm -hmm. picks up cards very specific cards when he sees the card in the condition that he likes, but he's much bigger on memorabilia, right? Like if I were to say, Hey, there's a, you know, Hey, you have your X budget to buy something. Here's a 52 tops mantle and a five or a, you know, game use ball from 1927 signed by Babe Ruth. 10 times out of 10, he's buying that ball. Right. So interesting. Yeah. So for him, he's, he's not a card guy. He has bought some cards recently. He got the uh, that Keeler Bryce Williams card. Yeah, yeah. And then he texted me the other day. He picked up, um, uh, I think it was an E90 uh, Keeler. He has two, I believe. There's the portrait, and then there's the horizontal one of him throwing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he picked up the the throwing one, and he actually did. He, he buy had, that on eBay. Yeah, he picked it up on it. Yeah, I saw that card hit the mark. It's that's it, a very cool card. Yeah. And the um the one yeah, I, I know I know the exact copy that you're talking about. Nice in my in my eBay safe searches, I love Willie Keeler too. I'm I'm yes. a Willie Keeler. Yeah, guy. I know. Yeah, so and, you guys and, have that in common. And and, yeah. and that's the thing, right? Like he, he actually likes when he does buy a card, he does like to get them. So those last two you bought them a little bit lower grades. Obviously, Bryce Williams cards don't come in high grades, right? They're right super thin like tissue paper thin cards right well maybe not quite but really thin um the e90 he wants the card he found that three it's a pretty good three so he bought it he asked me like we were chatting and when before he bought it, and he said what do you think and i said look the population on you know fives and sixes is pretty low right and i'm like the three is a nice looking three why don't you buy the three and if you see the five or six come up for sale buy that and then you know yeah sell the three maybe i'll buy it from you right like yeah you know so and, and it's it's i have a few i have a few collector friends that have hit me up with similar questions recently of 
hey, I'm buying this card. I think it's the one I want. And then it's kind of like with you when you got your your uh, um, your, your, your 54 on your banks, right? Where, where you were able to create a problem with the card that didn't exist because you wanted it to be so perfect. And I had people <laughs> ping me on that. Like I have a good buddy of ours um, reached out to me about a huge card that he just picked up at auction. And he said, it's got some white on the top above the, yeah. above, I'm not going to get into the specifics, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. And I said, look, my response was the same thing I told my dad. I told him, I said, look, <laughs> I would buy it because that card is super rare and a great grade. They don't come up for auction very often at all. But look, yeah. if another one comes up that looks a little nicer, buy that one and sell this one, right? Like, you might as yeah. well. Like, for, for, for you and I, most of the cards that we buy, you know, we could probably wait a little bit and find one that's that's a little bit better eye appeal. But yeah. for, for for guys that that are buying super rare cards, it's like, look, you're not going to see the card come up that often. So you might as well buy it. And then on the very off chance, a nice one comes, a nicer one comes up later because the ones they both bought are nice. They are nice yeah. looking cards. Yeah. But it becomes a later buy that and sell this one. Right. And I think both of those guys are in a situation where not like us, where, if, you know, we bought a huge card, we'd have to sell the other one first to buy the new one. I think both of those guys are in a position where if they found the new one, they could buy it and then just sell it and kind of pay themselves back. Right. <laughs> so let me say a couple of things. <laughs> I'm chomping at the bit here. So first the E90 dash ones, they're notorious for being really, really bad centering. Mm -hmm. And the one that your dad picked up, uh, one of the directions, if it's, I'm pretty sure it's the same copy I'm thinking of. One of the directions side to side was really good. And the other direction was uh, good, but not perfect. And for that card and that set, that's really, really good centering. And yeah. So when I saw it, I was like, ah, I can't, I, I can't spend that much, but I'd love to have that card. And <laughs> so here your dad bought it is outstanding. Uh, so I have an example. This is going to be ridiculous, but so Blackbeard, the the mm -hmm. N nineteen Blackbeard card. Okay, there's like uh, something like nineteen graded by PSA or something, and then uh, I don't know twelve or fifteen by SGC. So there's about forty that have been graded, and one became available. You know, I I basically found this guy on Facebook who I heard had one. I contacted him directly. He was going to put it in an auction. I'm like, don't put it in an auction. <laughs> you should sell it to me. And he quoted me a price that I thought was fantastic. And I said, I'm buying it knowing that there's an auction that's actually going on right now. Uh, it's a very small auction house for non-sport cards. And, and there's one for sale. And I knew it was going to be for sale. And it's a six. And so my thought process was, I'm going to buy this two and then I'm going to make a play for the six. And if I get the six, then I'll sell the two to put the funds toward the six. Right. Mm. And, and so that's what I did. And so there were a few people talking about the card, knowing it was going to come up and I'm going to pull it up on my phone right now. And, and there were a few people saying, well, what do you think that six is going to go for? Cause a card like that doesn't just doesn't sell. There's, you know, they don't have public sales of them. And when right. they do, they're thrashed ones or something, mm. you know. And so I there were some people saying, Oh, I think it'll go for and the number that, that people were throwing around was uh kind of a few people said uh probably like twelve to thirteen hundred dollars for this six. So I'm I'm like, dude, if it goes for twelve or thirteen, I'm I'm definitely buying it. Like well, the, the auction has about 10 days left. No, nah, not 10. Eight days left. Nine days left. And it is currently at, I'm pulling it up. It is currently at 2541. Oof, okay. So it is more than double what the estimates were for what people were thinking it was going to go for. Mm -hmm. And so part of me is like, oh man, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I mean, I mean, I, I'm out, you know, right. Uh, that's a lot of money for a pirate card. Uh, but, and, and again, and it has, I'm looking here how much time it has. It has okay. It does. It has 10 days left. 
and it's it's at 2541 already so i'm tapping out so now i'm almost at the point where i'm going i hope it sells for 10,000 right and my two is worth way more yep. than i've paid so mm -hmm. there comes this point where you go okay this is my plan and then the plan changes because it some, does something you weren't expecting and then you don't start rooting for it to stay low you start rooting for it to go high mm -hmm. so i really have two choices here the choices are i either either start a gofundme account and i say hey everybody if, if you all throw in five or ten bucks then i can get the six or i just root for it to go to the moon so that my two is uh worth way more than i paid that's that's where i'm at that makes sense uh, your two is a nice looking two though right is it the is six that much better looking so my two on the front is fantastic yeah on the back it has uh, a little bit of of uh paste from being glued in an album okay and it has a, a tiny amount of paper loss okay um and i know a lot of people say you know oh who cares about the back um you and i have another friend uh who lives in the pacific northwest who i i he's a big back guy mm -hmm. he he thinks uh backs are really important to him and it's starting to rub off on me mm. where the backs matter but when you have a card where there's like a pop 40 right mm. you and 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 i i know of a a really nice ungraded one mm. and i know the guy who owns it and and i'm gonna see him again at some point and when i do now that i know that this six went for what it went for because i think that this one would be at least a six okay um i'm gonna make a play for the for the raw one so nice. but but you just have to kind of i don't know so that that's where that's where i'm at now the other thing i want to throw back to is our friend that, that bought the big card that asked you for your opinion and he asked me for my opinion uh he recently uh and, and i don't like i don't like uh talking about other people's business on you know unless they volunteer it or want to come right. on or something he he responded to my question for this week that i do my monday question to everybody you know what are your take what's your take and what's your card and, and he publicly put out there his pickup so uh that will definitely be featured in uh my monday video as one of the responses because uh to say it's a massive card is is quite an <laughs> understatement. Yeah, I would say that unless you've got, you know, I don't even know who. I, I can't think of anybody, really, that would watch the channel that would post a card that would be bigger than that card. So on Monday, when you watch Greg's video, the biggest card that pops is the one that we're talking about. And, and I'm going to pull something else up here. I don't know if you are aware of this yet because I don't think we've talked about it. You might already know also. Uh, but another one just hit the market. Did you hear about this one? No. Uh, another one of those cards just hit the market. Well, oh, I'm sorry. It's going to be in Heritage's winter auction. Ooh. And it's a nine. Oh, God. Okay, so that that card will be th that when that card sells, it could likely be on the list of like the top twenty most expensive cards that have that have sold. Right, baseball cards. I mean, not, what would I be? Mean, I mean, th there's a lot of really awesome modern basketball patch auto cards that have sold for over a million bucks. So let's take all those awesomenesses out. <laughs> baseball, it will probably right. be a top twenty baseball card when that thing sells. I I think you're probably right, um, but knowing what that's going to sell for and knowing what our buddy just got his card for i i would rather pay what our friend paid for the copy that he has which is spectacular yes it than is. have to pay the additional fee to get to the nine 
and um and i i mean because there is a sliding scale you know on like well this is this might be a higher grade but they can't look much better than the one that right. everybody got right it's not like it's, it's not like if the value of a perfect one is x the one that he bought is 70 percent of x and the nine will be 90 percent of x no it's like yeah. the one that that nine will probably go for five times more than what he paid for a seven right and his seven is i mean i don't know how it could be it can't his seven's so good there is no such yeah. concept of a five times nicer looking one right correct so, correct and and the seven that he got i i thought i i kind of had my own ballpark of what i thought that the auction price would end at and and he got it significantly lower than I thought it was going to go. That's what I that's what I was thinking too because I looked at historical sales of the card in a lower grade, and th there's some sales of that card in like a five that are pretty close to, like, you know, fairly close, like within fifty percent of what he paid for that seven. And when you guys see the everybody's watching this and they're like. What are you guys talking why, about? <laughs> why are you speaking in code? Again, I just don't like I just don't like sharing other people's business unless they're saying, sure, feel free to share it here. Right. So that's, and that's you guys will see it on Monday. So this is a super preview for Greg's video on Monday. <laughs> yeah. And you could probably figure it out by going to the Monday video and looking in the comments, too. But yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, but again, going back to what we just talked about like like this friend this this guy is like you know that that has added the the number of people that now i communicate with that are just great people and he's a great guy and mm -hmm. and it's it, it it's completely changed the whole thing on on the whole collecting cards is like i get so excited for other people when they get a pickup like that you know mm -hmm. or i mean it doesn't have to be a massive pickup like i have buddies right. that send me pictures of 40 dollars carts that they buy and it's just like it's 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 fun to root for your for your pals and the yeah stuff no I, I i love when people do reveal videos right like i watched one uh rick vintage all cards did a reveal video yeah. today yeah and I had never seen that card before, but like he was well, so it's excited. a pop one, right? Right. Well, that's probably why I haven't seen it. But he <laughs> yeah. was so excited. Like that's what I like about it, right? The card itself is a cool card, but watching somebody get, you know, and you know people's personalities, right? So like, you know, you when, when you get excited, you're more animated, right? Than maybe when Rick gets excited. So you yeah. can tell by knowing their personality when they talk about it, you're like this this person's very excited about this right yeah. now right so, and it's just it's cool well, to watch that it's 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 fun so let's talk that. about that for a second so yeah. you so the card that rick vintage oddball cards picked up is a pop one uh obviously very rare um you and, and i've heard other guys talk about because i always kind of had a little bit of a stigma about altered cards like mm -hmm. altered cards for me were kind of like no, I, I stay away from that. But the more, the longer I stick around, right? And the the more I see cool cards, the those rarer cards, it doesn't really bother me that much anymore that they're altered because it does tell part of the story. And and you you bought a card recently that you did a you did a reveal video on. And it was uh, an altered card. And it's like Dave Blue Jacket says, nobody cares when a card like that is altered. Nobody cares. The fact that it exists and the fact that it looks decent is, is really a big deal. And so you grab the card. So show, show the card. I mean that is fantastic. So it's it's a E9 it's a 1910 E98 Cobb. This is the orange background version. Um it has a little bit of paper loss on the sleeve right there which is I mean I'm a background guy so the fact that the paper loss is not on the orange I'm Now you know about. there are 
there are 20 people screaming at their screens right now going don't you don't don't start by pointing out what you don't like about the card talk about how much you do like the card well i love the card it's it's it, to me it, it's it's for the types of cards that i own in my collection this is a very rare card for me yeah. this is a very rare card um the back is fantastic right so you know per our buddy in seattle nice yeah. back yeah um I, I absolutely, I absolutely love the card, but the fact that you know it's a, it's an authentic, I figured I'd just kind of point out, I, I'd point that out. But like, yeah, I, I absolutely love the card. Obviously, if I had issue with it being authentic or altered in some way, I wouldn't have bought it. But H has I don't your care. opinion on altered cards changed? Because my, it has for me. It's I would, changed. I would say my opinion on altered cards that are very old and yeah. Yeah. rare. Yeah, has has changed yeah, because there are certain I mean, cards yeah. from certain sets where you're not going to see it unless it's altered or it's going to be a massive, massive. Like if that card was in a three, I probably I mean, I know for sure if that card was in a three, I wouldn't be able to buy it. Right. I mean, even yeah. in a one, it's pretty I mean, in a one, it's really expensive. Right. So getting it authentic, I got a good deal on it. Plus, I got to buy it from Ash, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, no, I I think yeah for for me the the, the pre World War, especially pre World War One cards, mm -hmm. I don't. I would rather have a card that has good eye appeal that's authentic than one that looks like it got run over by a truck and is like a one or a one point five. Yeah, and that's a yeah. shift for me because historically I probably would have gone the other way. Like I have a Honus Wagner card that um i have a document on honus wagner i could have bought the authentic it would have looked better but it was trimmed so i bought i bought it in a one and it's it looks pretty run over it's like the one card in my collection that i would consider upgrading hmm. yeah i mean i i bought a card the other day and, and i don't know if i i think i maybe texted it i think i i think you were on a group that i texted it to i haven't gotten it yet and i haven't done a like a reveal video on it yet but with that particular card with that particular back it's a pop too yeah. and and it's like that's <laughs> the fact that it exists and it's in a 2.5 and it's a pop two that's so right you know it's like it's like if that was altered i still would have been interested mm -hmm. you know because it's a pop too. And that's my thing. It's it's not even the authentic piece when it's a very, when it's a very, and again, rarity is, you know, calling a card rare, I think is like calling a card expensive, right? The expensive is depends on the person, right? Like, yeah. yeah, I know a lot of guys that, you know, for me, a card that's expensive for them would be like, I don't think I would spend that little on a card, right? Yeah. <laughs> Right. And then vice versa, right? There's other guys who have budgets that are different. So like calling something expensive, it, it's relative. I think um, rare is relative too, right? Like when I was at Strongsville, I was looking at a uh, Herpelsheimer Cobb and Dave Blue Jacket came over and was like, he was looking at it with me. And then the lady that had the card, she like turned around to go talk to another potential customer. And he, he just said, nah, no, nah, it's, it's, it's not it's it's not rare enough for the price that they're asking. So okay, cool. So I didn't buy it. But for Dave, rare for for Dave, rare is like five or less, maybe 10 or less. Like that's what he thinks is rare. For me, it's like, oh wow, there's less than 50. To me, yeah. that's super rare, right? Like yeah. yeah, I don't think I have other than some of the modern stuff that's numbered, I don't think I have a lot of cards that have a population of less than that. I think I have. I probably have a handful of cards that have a population of less than 50 that aren't modern cards that are numbered out of something less. Now, as you were saying that, I I feel like my head just exploded that we haven't even addressed the last time we talked, which was the conversation with Dr. Beckett. Yeah. Like how, how cool was that? That was sweet. That was super sweet, man. That's like, it's you know, like you said at the beginning, right? That is to me like incredibly meaningful because yeah. his price guide was such an important 
thing when I was a kid growing up, right? Like it's, it's, it's nuts to me, right? Like it's, I just think that that, that was just super cool. Cause back then there were very few like famous heavy hitters yeah. in the industry, right? Like there was Mr. Mint. I met Mr. Mint. There you go. All right. And then you got Dr. Beckett. There were some huge collectors, but they were under the radar. Obviously, it was it, that was before the internet, right? So, I mean, it would be like if you were like a if you were a financial investment junkie, and you were to meet Warren Buffett or Steve Forbes or you know Forbes Magazine, like right. if you were to do something like that, that's that's kind of the equivalent for for us. And and the the thing about it that is the most impressive to me is the guy has such high integrity yes. and he's such a nice guy. Uh-huh. Like, and, and he wasn't trying to play a bunch of political games. Like we ask him a question and he, he answers it. You know, right. he doesn't give you this non answer answer, right? Mm. There's no word salads going on. He's like legitimately will answer the question. <laughs> there were a couple of times I asked him stuff and I was like, is he going to you know, duck for him to throw a shoe? At right. Me? Like when you ask but, him about like what Beckett currently doesn't do well. Right. It's like, right. And he caveated it with, Hey, you know, I'm not a decision maker there. Yeah. I like these guys a lot. I would help yeah. them out. Yeah. But here's the things that I think that they could, imp- it's like, okay, cool. Like that, that, that's a good answer. Right. Like, a lot of times these guys are super political with the way they answer it. Right. And it'd be like, you know, it sounded like a high school football player being interviewed. Right. Like we got to do what you... we got to do. We got to come together as a team. We got to push hard and drive. Yeah. And if we all do, if we all do our job, everything will turn out. All right. Like that's the kind of answer you usually get. So the fact that he would go into specific details on things that he thinks they could improve on and yeah. areas, I thought that was, I thought that was, Really what cool. did you think when I asked him, would you ever consider coming out of retirement to take back over and write the ship? When you said that, I literally was thinking to myself, Steve Jobs is sort of like the Dr. Beckett of Apple. Yeah. Yeah. Notice how I, I said mean, it that way and not the other way. Like, yeah, Dr. Beckett is the Steve Jobs of, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah I mean, but, but I mean, I mean, the thing about Beck, Dr. Beckett is like, he's clearly a visionary, you know, he clearly was able to, to take something and, and it wasn't just his, his tactics of distribution that made the Beckett what it was. There mm-hmm. was, there, there was, there was more to that. There were things in the Beckett that were done that made it what it was. You, you, you could distribute, you know, you know, I don't know, chicken legs cross country. That doesn't mean that people are going to want them. Right. But he, he distributed something that also got people to want it. And, and, and not only did they want it, but they were like straight up addicted to it. And it, it was impactful on the hobby and helped the hobby grow because he did it i mean so he definitely is not he's he's an idea person as well right and that's the thing that is i mean that's the thing about dr beckett that's super rare you very rarely find a phd statistician yeah who's a marketing guy like that's a that's a very rare that's a very rare combo and he clearly partnered with some good people and he'll give, he gives his team credit always immediately mm-hmm. and, and what they did. But at the end of the day, ev- everything had to get green lit or red lit. And mm-hmm. he was the one doing that. Yep. So, you know, like the idea of subgrades, I mean, the fact that others haven't been forced to do that is mind boggling to me, but. Yeah. I mean, I, so anyway, I, I, it just was, that was just a really cool experience. And I'm, I'm glad we, you know, got to do that, but yeah. And you, and, and that's a cool thing was, it was really neat to have him on. It was really cool to talk to him. But I, I think my biggest takeaway was for being who he is and the channel that he came on and the topic he's, he discussed, he's very nice to us. 
right? Because like, who are we, right? <laughs> I thought that was cool. A hundred percent. We're just a couple of dorky dudes who like to talk about cards, and and we're a dime a dozen. Right. And he was very, very gracious, and uh, it it was just it was just cool that he. He was willing to do that. I agree. Yeah. So, Doctor Beckett, if you happen to watch this, thank you He's again. He's not watching. There's I no know. way. He, I, I mean, <laughs> he might remember our names, uh, but <laughs> he's a smart guy. He probably would. He seems like somebody that would, that doesn't forget names. Yeah. So we've got um, we've got about ten minutes left. So let's get okay. off topic a little bit here because we've yeah. been well. We've been. Yeah. This is a good one. We've gotten off topic a few times. But let's get off topic again. Okay. You're collecting for the year. I know. Yeah. Our video about our plan for 2025 won't be for a couple more months, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't want to get into specifically like what we purchased. We'll we'll do a video maybe next month of like a recap, and then we'll also maybe a recap in December and then January. We could talk about the plan for for the year, right? But my question and what I'm curious for about is a year ago when we thought about where our collection was going and what our plan was. How have you seen your collection grow? And do you feel like I feel, which is I set a plan. I set a plan that was very like sniper. And I like shot like a, like a sawed off shotgun. Right. Mm. Like I wanted very specific and I changed. I, I was all over the place this year. Right. Like the last, I don't know. I would say out of the 30 cards I bought this year, like 10, 15 were ones that I, that a year ago I said I wanted this year. So I, I've jumped all over the place. How about you? Yeah. I mean, I mean, literally that question I I could talk to you about for an hour. Like, I know we have and, nine and, minutes, so that's why yeah, I did it. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, well, I could go for three hours. A normal person could go for one. But um, uh, if you would have told me that I would have gotten into my collection the cards that I've added to my collection and that I would have gotten the cards that look the way that they look in the grades that they are, I, that, I would have said there's just no way that I could have that me on my budget with my situation could have picked up those cards in those grades with that eye appeal in this amount of time literally seems impossible. I mean, keep in mind, three of those cards that I picked up this year are cards that were, you know, uh, 30 year search parties were out for right you know and and then I, I got those three in a three month period which i don't even know and and how i got them and the fact that i i wouldn't have had the money to get them but i got one through a trade i got one because a dealer friend basically sold it to me at wholesale price you know the it, it just the way that it played, I got one as a gift. I mean, I got one as a gift, one as a trade, one as a purchase way under wholesale. The yeah. amount that I actually physically spent on those three cards is insanity. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it, it was a, it's one of those things where, uh, you know how like, like, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Like last year, Strongsville was so awesome. I'm a little bit nervous about Strongsville this year because there's no way that I could enjoy it as much as I did last year. And yeah. this year well, was so fantastic. It, it was the first time we'd been there, right? So it, it's like the first but, time you do it. But it was the first time it was the size of the group. It was who from the group was there. It was the cards that we all found it was the laughs and the, th yeah. I mean, it'll be fun, but it won't be Strongsville of 2024. Right. You know, and, and this year was so uh, emotionally 
amazing in how my collection building went down. Mm -hmm. 2025, I'm sure will be cool. I'll pick up some cool cards, but it won't be 2024. 2024 is like a landmark year that I, there's just, there's no way it could ever be matched again. Yeah. It's just, it's impossible. Nice. That's a, that's awesome. Like I, I felt, so it's funny that you say that 2023 was a pretty good year for my collecting. And I take that back. 2022 was a pretty good year for my collecting. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do more, but then I started doing YouTube in early 2023. So I was like, Oh, okay. So that drove me to pick up more stuff so I could do, um, so I could show more content. So that year I got done and I was like, wow. And I did my video at the end of the year of the top hundred cards in my collection. I think last year I was like, I know my top 100 cards, 28 of them are new, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I was like, wow, nothing will touch that. And then this year, I didn't, I'm not going to add, I don't think I'm going to add 28 new cards to my top 100 list, but I think I've added a dozen, maybe 15 pretty freaking sweet ones. So like, oh, I, yeah. I, I, I don't, oh, yeah. And I agree. I don't like next year. I don't know how that'll happen. I, I don't know. Maybe it will, but I, I, I agree with you. Like it for me, the last two years have been the, the cards. I, the, the cards I've added to the collection the last two years. I, if you asked me three years ago, here's a list of cards. I would say, yeah, cool. The, the top half of those I'll never even own. Yeah. So yeah, yeah no, it's, it, it's fun though. And I'm, actually, I'm looking really forward to us talking about our strategy for 2025. I I am too. And I don't, I, I haven't really figured out what my strategy is yet. Um, I'm still trying to wrap my head around what has happened this year. Um, but I, I, I'm starting, I'm starting to see the kind of ideas slowly start to come together and, it's going to be interesting, but so we got that coming up. We'll probably in the next month or so month, month and a half, we'll do a recap and then we'll do some sort of, uh, prelude to, uh, next year. We're going to show you guys our lists that we will change 20 times. <laughs> so I definitely, I definitely will be happy to share my list, which will 100% change <laughs> multiple times. Yeah, which is the fun part. All right, well, dude, we got a couple minutes. Got to keep this under an hour because yeah. you know there are seven people still listening, and we want we want to make it to at least a handful. 100%. And you know what's funny? I'm surprised I haven't. It's it's five ten my time. And we're recording this on Halloween. I am shocked that I haven't been disrupted by any trick or treaters yet. So that that actually worked out fine. So wow. let's 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 get let, let's cut it off because I guarantee yeah. you now that I said that, knock on wood, I'm going to get a trick or treater here like in like ten seconds. So <laughs> <laughs> right awesome. on. Well, thank you, Greg. It was awesome chatting with you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We really appreciate it, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. All right, we'll talk to you guys next time.